So today's vlog is all about party planning uh, as far as decorations are concerned. Yesterday I started touching on this in regards to theme and how you can incorporate your theme into your decorations and kind of budgeting and that sort of thing. But today is just going to be about decorations, laying out your space, that sort of thing. So really well selected decor is going to generate a reaction or an emotion in your guests. So before you plan any of your decor, you really need to kind of envision how ideally you would want this party to go. I was going to be having a lot of um, children, small children and their parents. Um, you want a party atmosphere that's going to cater not only to the youth, but also to the adults. And if it's a party that's more geared towards like a ladies night or something, that's that's what you want to keep in mind. Like, do you want everyone to be mingling around? Do you want them all to be sitting down and like having quiet conversations? Do you want everyone to be congregating in the kitchen? Or do you want them to be milling around on your back porch? Like, kind of envision how you want this party to go. Because that's where you're going to be, have your jump off point from, right? Realize that at every party, there's always going to be someone that wants to like sit quietly in the corner. Sometimes that might be me, so, so don't make fun of the wallflower and try to cater to them because you know, you're just always going to have someone that just wants to take it easy. So when I'm laying out a space, um, I want to have a place, especially let's, let's just take it in regards to a kid's party. I want to have a place where the kids feel like it is their area, um, where if a parent goes in there, they're kind of trespassing. It's just a kid's area. And then I want to have the adults feel like they can congregate around different areas in the room. And I do that by creating moments with my decor. And what I mean by that is I will set up like a little display. Like for example, for Hannah's first birthday, I had, um, I did, I printed out some subway art in an eight by 10, framed it in an Ikea frame. Then I think I had some flowers and then I had a, um, a candle holder, a glass candle holder that I filled with multicolored round gumballs. And it was just this little moment where they could kind of stop and look and it was on um, the top of a bookcase. And so people could put their drinks down or their food down and have a conversation. And people were drawn to it because they wanted to read all the things in the subway art. You can accomplish the same thing by um, printing out enlargements of like really great pictures because unless you have a super tight-knit family or group of friends most likely you have taken pictures throughout the year that you have not posted on Facebook and uh, but they're really frame worthy so this is one of those opportunities where you can <laughs> kind of use your party budget to also decorate your home print out those pictures that you're like oh this is such a great picture or sometimes when you go and look at your pictures that you take, took like six months ago, at the time you might have thought, God, that is an awful picture. <laughs> but now you can look back on it and be like, she looks so cute. So go back, look at your pictures throughout the past year, print some of the great ones out and create little areas around the room where people can set their drinks down, have a conversation, look at the pictures, smell some flowers, that sort of thing. So that's what I like to do to kind of encourage mingling. Now, unless you strongly discourage it, everyone is always drawn to the kitchen. So make sure that your kitchen is tidy when you, when you are planning a party. Run all of your dishes and have your dishwasher empty because unless you are using all paper plates, um, there's probably gonna be some serving ware or something that needs to go in the dishwasher so that uh, the kitchen just kind of looks tidy and as the dirty dishes come in, you can just kind of kind of be cleaning as you're going so that everything looks nice. But the thing was is that I wanted to discourage people from being in the kitchen. So what I did, and this was multi-purpose, um, we have this pass-through between our kitchen and our dining room. And our dining room was obviously where we we're gonna have all of our food stationed. Um, and the pass-through is big enough where we could have like French doors, but it's just an open space. So I got a big tension rod, which is like those curtain rods that you twist until they fit the space. The sun is beating on my face right now. <laughs> And um, I did that in a shower curtain. And I put up a curtain between the kitchen and the dining room so that if you were getting your food, you couldn't really see into the kitchen. You couldn't see Chris back there like prepping the next course or whatever. And um, we also used it as a backdrop. We put Hannah's high chair right in front of this shower curtain. And that's where she did her smash cake. We took all the pictures and it was really cute. It was a nice background. It wasn't busy. It didn't have like wrapping paper all over the place. It was just like, a nice 
backdrop, backdrop. And it also discouraged people from hanging out in the kitchen. At our Christmas party, people always convene in the kitchen, but we encourage it then because that's where we have um, the huge bowl of eggnog. And it's always in the kitchen because it's super messy. You do not want that spilling on your carpet at all. And uh, so people always just like hang out in the kitchen at our Christmas party and that's fine. But at the birthday party, I wanted them out and mingling. So consider what you can do to either encourage or discourage people from hanging out in your kitchen because it is going to happen. Then as far as creating a kid's space, figure out where you want the kids to eat or where you want them to do their activity and make it kid size. So if you don't have like a kid's table or a kid's picnic table, hopefully you have access to Ikea because Ikea is amazing. They have these um, LAC, L-A-C-K side tables. They're about eight to $10 a piece depending on the finish and the color and they put together really easily. We have three of them in our house and uh, at eight bucks a piece you just like can't go wrong. <laughs> and they're the perfect height to where a toddler can stand or Ikea also sells like little stools and chairs and stuff like that. So um, that's a great way to like either set up an art activity or a food, something for them to eat. Or another great option is to put it all down on the floor. Set up like a kid's picnic area, but like really go all out. Don't just say like you're eating on a blanket on the floor. Like make it look like it's a really cool picnic. Maybe have a picnic basket, have everything like kid friendly, red checkered blanket would be awesome. I think kids dig having a picnic. I think they think it's pretty neat. If it's something like totally out of the ordinary and they're not having to sit in like booster seats and high chairs and stuff like that, I think they'll think it's pretty neat. And then as far as adults, are you gonna have them like have a set down dinner, set down meals? If not, um, if you expect them to be kind of like milling around, make sure, like I said, you give them plenty of surfaces where they can set their plate down, take a drink, use the napkin, that kind of thing. Um, but I also try to make my food extremely easy to eat. Unless it's a set down meal, everything needs to be like finger food. And it also needs to be like tidy finger food. I say needs to, obviously you can take it with a grain of salt, but as far as like in my mind goes, if I'm expecting people to like carry their plates and their drink, food needs to be super easy to eat. It also needs to be delicious and I don't want it, them to like take a bite and it spill all over their clothes. Anyways, that's getting into the food, but that's just something to consider as far as your decor goes. And then obviously we use decor to delineate space. So think of where your decor is going to be placed in the room and make sure that it's kind of evenly distributed. So I think it's really easy to get a concentrated impact of your theme and your colors and stuff all around the food because you've got the plates and the cups and the napkins and the forks and the tablecloths and everything like that and that's all going to be where your food is but how is the rest of the room going to look like when people show up imagine it as soon as they show up when everything is over on the food are you going to have like place settings already laid out or are you just going to have a bare tablecloth so if you're going to have a bare tablecloth which i usually do um, i usually try to make it pretty vibrant because it needs to bring color into that part of the room and then i like having flowers or something bright on the table i also like having picture frames so that people have something to look at if they're sitting next to a boring person um, Ikea has this really great two-sided picture frames. They're like 99 cents. I will try to include a link down below. But those are a great option to kind of like set on a table, especially if you put them kind of as a runner down the table. That's really great. And um, also like hanging up either decor from the ceiling. So you could do like tissue balls or... Um, and remember, if you're using those like tissue balls that you like pull out, you know what I'm talking about? There are a million YouTube tutorials. Those things cannot be reused. But if you get the Chinese lanterns, like the round ones, those just compact down flat so they store really well and you can use them in the next year. So I think usually those are priced about the same if you buy them at the party store. Obviously you can make the tissue paper balls at home if you have tissue paper, um, but they do take a lot of time to set up like at the party, like the day of the party, because you don't want them to just be sitting around forever because they deflate and they crunch up a little bit. So make sure you leave yourself plenty of time to separate all those layers of tissue paper. I am partial to the little Chinese lantern round balls because they set up in like 10 seconds. They fold down flat. I can use them year after year and they, to me they're just a kind of a better investment. They're not DIY, uh, so I will lose unique points there. <laughs> I will lose Pinterest points, but I think that they have a really great impact. They're very symmetrical. You can get them in lots and lots of different colors, either at your local party store or online. And um, I just think that those are kind of a great little way to kind of draw your eye up. And especially if you don't have any surfaces down below where you can add pops of color, 
do not overlook your ceiling. Um, and then also I like to have something colorful right around where people are supposed to put their gifts. So um, at Hannah's first birthday party we had people put them on the, um, we don't have a mantle on our fireplace but we have like a brick, I guess you could kind of like sit on it right? I don't, I don't know how to explain this, but anyways, it's a little brick ledge, and uh, we had all the presents put on there, and then we flanked that by, um, with huge bouquets of balloons. Um, so everyone kind of knew that, like, that was a focal point, that's where all the presents were going to be, and then when Hannah and Chris and I sat down and opened presents, all the pictures looked great because there was balloons behind us, there was a pile of, like, really brightly wrapped presents behind us, it just looked, like, very picturesque. So I always try to envision like what my pictures are going to look like. That's why I had the backdrop behind Hannah's high chair that was multifunction. It separated the kitchen from the dining room, but it also gave me a backdrop for her smash cake pictures. And then the balloons served it as a backdrop for um, the gift pictures, but they also added a lot of color into the living room where there wasn't a lot of place to put color. One tip when you're going to the party store. Have an idea of what you want your balloon bouquet to look like. I know this sounds dumb, but um, keep in mind that if you don't tell them, usually they're going to put all the balloons on the same length of string. So it's going to be like tied down. You're going to have all the strings coming up and all the balloons are going to be like in an arc, like all at the same height. So we did that for her first birthday and I really liked the look. But for the second party where we had it flanking the entrance of the like outdoor hut at the park, I wanted the balloons to be more like vertical and so I had them stagger them. Stagger the height, um, I figured out how tall I wanted the highest one, how tall I wanted the shortest one. I put them all on white strings so it looked very unified, I wasn't being distracted by the string colors. And um, I picked out the balloons to be the exact same colors in each bouquet and I actually had them so they were like identical. <laughs> And I know that seems totally ridiculous and OCD, and it is, but it looked really great. It looked great. As far as, this isn't really about decor, but it's about using your space and creating an atmosphere for your guests, which I think really decor is all about. The very first impression that you give your guests is when they pull up to your house and they're in their car and they have a screaming kid in the car seat and a present that they hope you like and, uh, whatever, they may be running five minutes late or whatever it is. Make it really easy for them to know where to park. So either include parking information on your invitations, include a map in, with your invitations and kind of dictate where the parking is supposed to be. And then obviously make it really easy to know which house is yours, especially if you're on a busy block or all the houses look the same. So that's why I like balloons out front, um, a wreath on the door, something to let them know that this is the party house. Um, let them know right off the bat what they're supposed to do as soon as they come into your house. Are they supposed to take their shoes off? And usually you can do that just by like having a basket full of shoes at your front door and then they kind of get the picture. Alright, so I hope this answers some questions. I hope you guys have a great party and I will talk to you later. Bye guys.